Good morning. I want to welcome you here to online church and our living room worship. It's so good to be with you this morning. I want to especially welcome our friends and family and those that are here worshiping for the first time today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. And we are so, so glad that you chose to worship with us today. Now, I just want to take a few seconds to acknowledge that, yeah, this is not church like we're used to. But, and the important part of this is, if our hearts are turned to God, if we're seeking to praise Him and to worship Him, it doesn't matter where we are. We have this blessing of technology where we get to be together, even from our separate places, our homes, our, our jobs, or wherever we find ourselves. So this morning, as we prepare for worship, just take a few moments, take a deep breath. Let go of, of the struggles of the week, and I know that there are many for, for many of us, and, and enter into this time where we get to worship God, where we get to be loved by our Father and bathed in the, in the grace and the mercy of our Creator. Let us worship today. online church, our announcement time looks a tad bit different. First announcement this morning is our online connection cards. Now what I want you to do is go down into our comment section and the first pinned comment is going to be a link to our connection card. Go ahead and click on that sometime during the service today and let us know who is worshiping with you and if there's anything you need from your church, any prayer requests, physical needs, any counseling needs, whatever it is, click on that let us know and we will get back with you as soon as we can so that we can help meet your needs and help connect you with the larger church in this time. Announcement two. Now, because online church is a tad bit different than in-person church, we uh, are working especially hard to help you engage in community and in the life of the church. So the first thing I need you to do today, and I want you to do with regard to engaging, is like this post, like our Facebook page, and make sure you head on over to our YouTube channel and subscribe to that as well. What this does is it shows us that, that people are getting involved and it helps connect you with what's going on with the church. And also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, it helps us, the more people we get uh, subscribing on there, the more uh, tools we can unlock to make that channel even more useful, effective, and impactful for you and for our larger community. So go ahead and do that today. And also, I have a challenge for you. This is our third announcement. And our challenge for you this week, so from right now, whenever you're watching, until next Sunday, your challenge is to reach out to five people in the church. Five friends, family, maybe even people you don't know very well. Reach out to them by text message, by telephone call, by email, by carrier pigeon, whatever you need to do to connect with five people this week. This is our intentional time of meet and greet that we would normally have on a Sunday morning. Now we have to be more focused and more intentional in it. So reach out to how many people? Five people this week. Let them know they're loved. Let them know you care about them. You're there for them if they need anything. So there's that. There's our announcements for this morning. I want to invite you now to a time of, of giving our offering. One of the things that I have become very, very much aware of over these past uh, couple of months that we've been in this self-isolation is just how good our God is to us. How much we have been blessed beyond anything we deserve. How much God provides for our needs um, and our needs in ways that we, you know, that we 
didn't even expect that we weren't prepared for and oftentimes we totally missed so this morning we're gonna take an offering now we normally do this when we're in person by passing the plate we can't do that now so what I want to encourage you to do or ask you to do is head over to our website coopersvilleumc.org slash online dash giving now what that'll do is take you to our giving page and if you already set up online giving it's really easy to log in and plug in your information and if you haven't set it up yet but you want to open the page now and you can fill it out after our worship service today also if you are um, prefer to give by check go ahead and and find your checkbook and set it out and, and maybe even take a few seconds or a few moments this morning to fill out that check and then later today drop it in the mail send it to the church your giving even when we don't meet together is still important it still provides for the ministries of the church it still provides a building where we can come back to meet together when we do but i don't know if you know this or not in the meantime while we're not meeting in our building our building is being used a couple times a month for some amazing ministry once to twice a month for the past few months versity blood has been host holding their blood drives in our building and the wonderful thing is that they're following all of the social distancing guidelines everything they need to do medically in order to keep people safe in that time but we have had more people step up to give blood in this time than we did before and that is amazing and a wonderful way to show that we truly care we are truly here to serve and to love the least and the lost and and everybody else in between so our building is being used our ministries are active and and fruitful right now this online church medium right now is reaching people we would have never ever had the chance to reach before that right there is a reason to praise God so if you feel like praising God for your blessings right now and for the way he's using the church go ahead and type amen in the comments section before below right now but don't forget the importance of giving now I know that there are some that are, are really struggling right now there are some that even this week, um, well, we're more than two weeks into our two months into our um, our self-isolation. There are still people that are getting laid off and even losing their jobs. There are people that are struggling financially and that are wondering, how can I continue to give when I don't even know where my income is going to be coming from? Two things. For you that are in that situation, know that God loves you. And know that it's not about how much you give as much as it's about the heart from which you give. God understands if you can't give what you did before. God knows that. He, he doesn't care about the zeros as much as he cares about the heart and your desire to, to love him. For the rest of us, for, for those of us who... Um, are, aren't struggling financially, who are, are, are finding that this time isn't as much of a burden. It's our opportunity to step up, to help fill the gap for those that are struggling, to help minister and, and to help uh, preach, not just with our words, but with our actions. So I want to invite you to consider giving more increasing what you're already giving back to God so that our ministries can reach out so that things like our Good Samaritan Fund can help those who are struggling so that we can continue to support places like Coopersville Cares that is providing necessary and life-giving food at this time for other ministries that we're supporting because of the work of the church of you and I so again, that, that website for our online giving, it's coopersvilleumc.org slash online dash giving. And don't hesitate. Don't, don't wait. Don't, don't try to explain away or, or, or justify why you don't do it in this time. Right? It's important that even now we are trusting God and we're giving back to God because he has blessed us so much more than we deserve. Let's continue our worship this morning now through song as we sing together this wonderful hymn.
casualties of our current reality is that for many of us, we've had to postpone or cancel or downright give up on our vacations. I was talking with my brother this week and he asked me how I was doing. I responded to him that I'm tired and I'm worn out, which is nuts because most of my ministry work now is, is sitting in front of a computer and being on the phone. But I'm finding that it's so much more exhausting than a normal work week ever was. And so I made the comment that I could really use a vacation. Now, that seems like an odd comment to me because, well, we've had two months of just hanging around the house. Why would we need a vacation from that? Well, it's, it's because a vacation is very different than a time of quarantine, right? A vacation, whether it's just camping uh, someplace close to home, whether it's visiting friends and family, or, or maybe it's going off on some fun and exotic uh, location. Uh, a vacation typically involves these things. It involves a hard break from our routine. It, it involves a, a reset to spend time with friends and family or, or with yourself or people you don't typically get to hang out with. And it involves a, a chance to relax and recharge so that when we come back to life, we come back rested and, and revived and ready to go again. Now, I know for some that these past couple of months have been no big deal. Y you may be thinking, why do I need a vacation from this? But I know that for many, and, and myself included, this time of isolation has been anything but a vacation. We want our friends and family. We, we want to get away from these same four walls. We want to enjoy someone else doing the work and the cleaning for us. We want sunshine and sandy beaches. We want fun and enjoyment. But the questions that were being asked this morning, the question we're being asked this morning is, what if we looked at those same principles behind why we take vacations and what if we applied them to our spiritual lives today. In in this time when our normal routines are are taking a vacation. What if we saw this time as this hard break in our routine as a reset? What if we relaxed and recharged so that when we come back, we can come back to life rested and revived and ready to go again. And what if we come back, when we come back from this time, what if we're ready to do life totally and completely for God? This is why we've been working through this reset series these past few weeks. We've, we've been looking at how we reset our ways of living with, with confession and repentance and, and how we revive our spirits by letting God do the works that he wants to do in and, and through us. And, and we also are talking about how we, we return everything to God. Now, we, we talked about resetting and reviving in our last two messages. And, and if you missed them or you want to hear them again, then you can head over to our Facebook or our YouTube pages and, and check them out there. But today, as, as we talk about returning to God, I want to show you how this idea, this returning concept occurs again and again and again throughout the scriptures. And, and in light of our fickle, wayward human hearts, it's, it's kind of a necessity that, that God repeats this calling over and over and over again. We're really good at being stubborn and hard-headed when it comes to God. Kind of like that whole incident we read about in Exodus with the recently freed Hebrew people in the desert of Mount Sinai where they decided to take all that gold they brought with them out of Egypt and melt it down and build a statue of a calf so that they could have something tangible, something physical to worship. They were stiff, immobile, and completely unaware of the things of God happening all around them. And you know what? We are really guilty of this too as church folk. Now, you may say, hey, hey, Pastor, I don't have any golden statues of calves lying around. 
Well, that may be true, but you and I both have things we've built up in our lives that have turned into idols, don't we? Things we worship, things that take that number one place in our life. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your job or your financial security. Maybe it's your insecurities. And, and yeah, those can become idols. Maybe it's how others see you. Maybe who knows what it is, but we all have these things that we have set up to worship instead of God. And, and when these things become priorities, when we make them into idols, we've essentially knocked God out of that primary place of worship in our lives. And then we need to hear and respond to the call of God to return to him. That even in the midst of our rebellion, our idolatry, our, our hard-headedness, and even our hard-heartedness, God calls his people through, through the words of his prophets. He says, return to me. He, he says it again and again and again in the scriptures. I want to read just a few of them for you from Zechariah chapter 1, verse 3. God commanded Zechariah to say this to his people. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord. In Nehemiah 1, 9, th through him, God declares to the people, but if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. God says to Job in chapter 22, verse 23, if you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. So, so clean up your life. <laughs> I really like that part there. Clean up your life so you can uh, return to the Lord and be restored. God says to Jeremiah in chapter 24, verse 7 of his book, I will give them hearts that recognize me as the Lord. They will be my people and I will be m their God, for they will return to me wholeheartedly. And in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 40, the prophet Jeremiah shares this exhortation with the people. He says, let us test and examine our ways. Let us return back to the Lord. Every time God's people turn from him and, and establish new ways of worshiping other created things instead of the creator, while they still have to deal with the consequences of their choices, God continues to offer a way to return to him. Every time God initiates this call, he shares the offer and, and sometimes he even orchestrates things so that his people can hear that call more clearly. The good news that we find in, in these stories of scripture is that God loves faithful, faithless, hard-hearted, wandering people. And he passionately and, and continually goes after them, after us. Now is the time to stop silencing that call to return. Now is the time to get serious with yourself and, and with God and return to him. It's time to start setting up patterns and practices now that will help you establish godly routines later on. So how do we do that? How do we return to God? Well, I, I got five, five suggestions, five steps for you. The first one, just do it. Declare today at this moment that you're done fighting and rebelling. You are returning to God. Now, now I know that this might seem a little awkward, but, but I want you to go ahead. And if you're at this point, say right now, out loud, wherever you're at, say, I am returning to God. Go in and say it. It's okay. I am returning to God. Say it out loud. And then I want you to go even farther. I want you to say it publicly. Now, now, how do we do that in a time of social distancing? Well, I want you to tell a friend or a family member, somebody that you trust that loves you. Tell them that today I am returning to God. Go ahead even and, and put it in the comments below. Type in, I am returning to God today. Make a formal declaration that things 
are changing today in my life. Step two, pray. Now, prayer is, is simply a conversation between, between you and between God. It's, it's talking to him and, and listening to him. It's setting aside time every day to, to stop what you're doing and talk to God. It's pretty hard to have a fulfilling relationship with someone when we don't talk, right? And, and I don't know about you, but I've definitely realized that so much more in this time. So, so we have to talk to God regularly if we want to get close to him, if, if we truly want to return to him. I've actually set up on my, my phone a recurring appointment in my calendar for every day at noon. And, and it simply says, stop and pray. At noon every day, it actually pops up on my phone to stop and pray. That, that's my reminder. And oftentimes I find that I'm caught off guard by it. And it, you know, it makes me realize that I've neglected that conversation in my day. Or maybe I've already been talking to him, but, but this is our daily scheduled conversation. And I found that I really need it a whole lot more than I ever thought I did. So talk to God and, and then listen to him. Pray for yourselves, your loved ones, for your not-so-loved ones. Pray for our leaders, our communities, and definitely pray for our world. So, so step three in returning to God is read his word. Again, you have to do this every single day as well. So let me ask you, do you know right now where your Bible is? For some of you, it's, it's probably sitting right next to you on the couch. Others, it may be at a bookshelf somewhere, or, or maybe it's in your car from the last time you took it to church. Maybe you use it on your phone, which, which is cool, but wherever it is, are you actually using it? Are you reading your Bible? Are you digging into it and letting it dig into you, letting God talk to you through these words? Or is your Bible app even one of your most recent apps on your phone? Is your Bible well used? Or, or, or maybe, maybe you got one of those Bibles that would serve well to put on display because it's pristine. See, if, if you want to know God, if you really want to return to him, then you have to connect with him. This book, this book right here is, is God speaking. That's why we call it Revelation. It's God revealing himself to us, showing us who he is, who he wants us to be, and how much he loves us. So read it. Like seriously, read this book. If you're looking for a good place to start, go to the Gospel of John in the New Testament. Great place to start, to start reading about who this God is and how much he desires to know us and to love us. Now, we have resources as your church that, can, that you can use to help you get into your Bible regularly. Our Daily Bread is a, is a resource that puts out a, a great devotional, and, and you can find a link for it on our website, or go ahead and get a hold of the church office, and we'll mail you a copy of it so that you can be reading this and getting into God's Word every day. And then there's the YouVersion Bible app for your phone. If you don't have this, go to the, to the app store on your phone after service today and, and download it, okay? Don't wait. It has daily scriptures. It has all the translations and the languages that you could hope for. And, and it also has hundreds of reading plans on it, okay? Reading plans that, that go for just a couple of days or, or throughout a whole year. And they offer a variety of topics and studies that will get you into the Word regularly. And, and just a piece of advice with the Bible app. When it asks you if you want push notifications, click yes. Because those annoying notices on your phone that tell you you haven't read your Bible today are super helpful in reminding you that you've got to do it. Read your Bible every day. Step four of returning to God. This one is, is simple but complex. Step four is to love. If you want to return to God, you've got to love. You have to love others, truly love them. 
Now, this involves reaching out to them, offering help and support, maybe offering a, a listening ear, laughing with them, crying with them, and, and helping them, giving to others. Even, now hear me out, even when it hurts. Jesus said that there is no greater love, no greater example of love lived out than to lay down one's life for one's friends. That's sacrifice right there. That's, that's giving to others, even when it means we have to give up something of ours, something that's important, something we value. In fact, that's why we're sheltering in place right now. It's why we're worshiping here online rather than in our building. We are sacrificing our practices and our preferences so that we can make sure everyone is safe so that we don't inadvertently spread this disease and cause pain and suffering in those whom we love. So step four is love. Now step five, step five is, is being open to whatever grand adventure God has in store for you. God has great plans for your life. Things that you would never have imagined if you got to write the story of your life. Be open to those adventures. Be open to wherever God leads you to do whatever God leads you to do. And be open to live like the anointed one that God describes in our passage from Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 through 7 here. The book of Isaiah chapter 61, the first seven verses. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come, and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, a festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them, though they have been deserted for many generations. Foreigners will be your servants, they will feed your flocks and plow your fields and tend your vineyards. You will be called priests of the Lord, ministers of our God. You will feed on the treasures of the nations and boast in their riches. Instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of honor. You will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. Now, what does that look like? Bringing good news to the poor, comforting the brokenhearted, proclaiming freedom to those held captive by sin and sinful people and systems. It's, it's comforting those who mourn with the reality that, that God's favor has come and they'll receive a joyous blessing that, that if they live in righteousness, God will honor them, will, will glorify himself through them. It looks like rebuilding the things that have been ruined the things destroyed by sin. It looks like reviving the lost. It looks like you and I serving as priests of the Lord, as ministers of God. And instead of hanging our heads and shutting our mouths in shame and despair, it looks like God honoring us and filling us with everlasting joy. Now, if your life doesn't look like that, then hear the call of God. Return to me. He says, if, if you see parts of your life looking like this, that's wonderful. Now, now I'm going to ask you and challenge you. Now, what can you do to keep going? That call of God is for you to do, you too. Return to God and he will come to you. Church, don't waste this time that God has given us. Return to God today. And, and this is what it's going to look like when, when we come together as the church and, and return to God. Malachi three sixteen through 18. 
Then those who feared the Lord spoke with each other, and the Lord listened to what they said. In his presence, a scroll of remembrance was written to record the names of those who feared him and always thought about the honor of his name. They will be my people, says the Lord of heaven's armies. On the day when I act in judgment, they will be my own special treasure. I will spare them as a father spares an obedient child. Then you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. People of God, let us reset our lives. Let us be revived by the holy fires of God's spirit and let us return to God so that our names too may be recorded on that scroll of remembrance so that the Lord of heaven's armies will declare over us that we are his people, that we are his special treasures. And he, our God, will care for us and he will spare us as a father spares his obedient children so that the world will see us as righteous so that there will be a marked difference between those who serve God and those who don't. So that the world can no longer deny who the church is. Reset your life. Return to God today and see just how much God will use you. God will use us. God will bless us all for his glory. Amen. Church, I want to invite you to join in together now. Wherever you're at, let's join our, our voices and our hearts together as we pray. Now I'm going to start by just giving a time of silence. And, and I want you to lift up whatever those concerns are. You know, I know some of the things that are going on in your lives, but not everything. I know some of the things that people you know are going through, but not all of them. So this is your chance to lift all those prayers, all those concerns, those joys, those struggles before God. And then I'll continue leading us in prayer and bring us to a time where we'll share together reciting the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray together as we lift our voices to God. God, it is a great comfort to know that you hear us wherever we are at. That we are your people and that what matters to us matters to you. And so, God, I lift up all of these requests that have been shared. I pray, God, for each person in situation, each concern, frustration, worry, and doubt. I pray, God, that your people will raise up, that we will help to, to answer these prayers, that you would use us to answer these prayers. God, I pray that we would be a people revived by your spirit so that the world may see who worships you and who doesn't. Father God, we, we pray now that your church will be strengthened and revived. And we pray that we would not take this time of isolation as a sign that we don't have to work. But God, that we will work more diligently to return to you, to proclaim the, the year of the Lord's favor, so that we will be the gospel preachers. We will be the ministers of the Lord in our places, wherever we're at, so that we can join that grand adventure that you have for us. Father, we praise you and we love you. We thank you today and we pray that you would hear us as together we lift our voices and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's close our time of online church today with this song of worship. Church, God is good all the time and all the time our God is good. Amen. Amen. We're coming to the time, the end of our time of living and worship today. And, and as we do, I just want to remind you of our announcements for the day. Make sure you go and you, you click on our connection card and let, let us know who worshiped today and if there's anything you need from your church. Also, make sure you're engaging with our online church. You're liking and following our, our Facebook page, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and make sure you're commenting below because those engagements uh, help to, to prosper the church, help us to grow what we're doing, and, and help us to reach out. And then our challenge that I issued, don't forget this one, reach out to five people this week. Right? By, by phone, by email, by carrier pigeon, by whatever you need to do to reach out to five people, to talk with them, to let them know that they're cared for and that they are loved by God. And if you want, if you feel led, let me know who you reached out to. Right, Let me know that you have followed through on this challenge. Now, as we close today, I, I want to leave you with this blessing. And this is one of my favorite blessings from Scripture. This is the priestly blessing that God told Moses that the priests are to pray over the people of Israel. So I'm going to pray this over you today. So receive this blessing from God. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Amen, brothers and sisters. I love you all. Have a blessed week. <laughs>